was quite the turnout at the 2014 Indian Orchard Mills Spring Art Show. The crowds filled the halls of the Dane Gallery inside the industrial building and just about every studio space as the artists opened their doors to show off all of their work. I started tie-dyeing when I was a teenager uh, many years ago and um, I just I love bright colorful colors and so I guess I have a lot of people that have inspired me, like um, Frida Kahlo and um, different Mexican artists. And I spent a lot of time living in California, where Mexican art is really prevalent in, in the whole area. Tess Alberg is a jack of all trades. She specializes in making birch fairy houses, paper mache, even jewelry. This is a Chinese-inspired dragon um, for Chinese New Year, which is in February. and. Uh, I made this when I was um, up in East Hampton. Um, I made it at the Universalist um, Unitarian Church up in Northampton. And the first time we performed with it was at the church. Um, and uh, this dragon has been in parades at East Hampton, um, the Halloween parade. And then also I took the, the dragon to occupied Wall Street. Quite, quite an exciting experience to be able to perform as an artist in a dragon in, in, a, in a movement, you know. And being appreciated by everyone and, and being cheered on was like a lot of fun. Th this is a really nice place. It's like a sanctuary for artists because we can come here and do our work and it's not a very expensive place it's affordable because it's really hard in today's society to actually make a living as an artist a lot of us have to do other types of jobs so that we can work on our art so it's always a constant struggle you know to make your art and have, actually have the time to do your art you know so but I really like being here this is a nice community there's a lot of really great artists here that are working on their artwork and we all are here here in one united group and um, we support each other you know there, there's always somebody here and we talk to each other we spend time with each other and it's a great community and I wish there were more like this you know viewers found their way through the maze of the mills which is known as the largest artist collective in the region artist Ed Snyder can't say more about how this community conducts itself it's a, it's a real exciting experience uh, so, and I never would have had the opportunity had I not been here. Uh, a woman named Emily, and this is a, a bus that she helped uh, found the Chicopee Library, I guess. And uh, this is going to go into the library. And it was a commission that came to me because the people saw me here at the mill. And um, so the exposure here was uh, helped me a great deal. And not only did they give me the commission, but I didn't even know what I was doing. You know, but I, I tried a couple little practice pieces, and the next thing you know, I talked to a lot of other different sculptors here in the mill. So you know, I was able to collaborate with a lot of other artists, and that's one of the great things about being a part of an artist colony like this is you have a lot of people that you can go to and pick their brain and and get help firsthand. And I was able to create this wonderful sculpture out of this white clay, and now I've made a mold of it, and I'm actually pouring um, bronze, powdered bronze with like a super glue kind of stuff and it's like 90% bronze, and it comes out as a heavy metal bronze sculpture. He, like Tess, also enjoys being a part of the work. This is a painting I did as a, um, uh, for a conservation group I belong to, and we put out wood duck boxes. So I'm involved in this. Every piece of artwork I do, I like to get really involved with it. So we put out these wood duck boxes so they have a place to nest, and um, the... Uh, they need a natural hole in a tree, and there's not often that many. So we, I put out we put 66 of them on the Housatonic River. I have at least a couple dozen of them down the Chicopee River here. And every year you have to go out and service the boxes. You have to pop the top off and put new wood chips in there. And this is a rendition of the hen waiting for her eggs to hatch. It was used as a fundraiser to help uh, with the club I belong to, and uh, as a fundraiser also with uh, Ducks Unlimited, and I, I sold Ooh, 60 prints of Ducks Unlimited, and they use that money to buy more land for ducks and habitat, things like that. So again, it's nice to be a part of, of your artwork in, in a special way like that. You know? He says this day will hopefully spark some interest. It also inspires a lot of new and upcoming artists to come out and find a new studio space because they get to see people in their spaces and most people work on their kitchen table as their first studio, you know, so, so it's nice to advance up to having an own, your own place like this. 
and a different kind of art offering a taste and expert operation located in the cellar. My name's Scott and I'm from Lazy Valley Winery and Copper Moon Distillery. I, uh, yeah, I make all the wines. I have nine different varieties. The others are sold out. I just have five here right now. And uh, this was licensed in 2007. The distillery was licensed in May of last year, so I also make liquor, different types of liquor. Well, we have a, uh, a rich, bold, uh, old vine Zinfandel. It's aged in brand new American oak. You can smell it, you can taste it, beautiful finish. We have a reserve Cabernet, aged in American and French oak, smooth, refined. A regular Cabernet, aged two years in American oak. It's very oaky and very earthy. We have a regular red Zinfandel, spicy and peppery. And over here we have a white Zinfandel, semi-sweet. And as far as the liquor goes, I have a couple products. One I put out, it's actually I call it Devil's Daughter because it's 125 proof moonshine. I use corn, sweet feed, and sugar obviously to get the alcohol. And it's distilled. And I have another product, it's called Apple Pie Moonshine. It's made with fresh pressed apple cider and I blend it with molasses. What makes his wine special? Where the ingredients come from? No more uh, I Love Lucy, no. I get all the grapes from California, Lodi or Central Coast, and I just use grapes and oak for the red wine, and I use grapes and stainless steel for the white wine. And that takes a good, a good year for them to mature, except for the Cabernet. That's two years in oak just because of the grape and the hardiness. But I've learned over the years, I've been making wine since I was 16, I'm 50 now, I've learned how to manipulate the wine so it ages a little bit quicker. But as far as the liquor goes, as soon as it comes out, it's ready, if you want to purchase clear liquor. The perfect pairing for the occasion. This is my first one doing the first art show here at the Indian Orchard Mills. It's very educational, it's, it's very informative, and it, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of people that are interested in art, and they're also interested in wine. So they kind of go together. I'm Darcy Fortune, Impact TV.